Hello, Grade 12s. Today we will look at the fundamental counting principle, what it is and where we can use it. We'll also look at factorial notation and all the different rules that play a part in counting. The fundamental counting principle is a fancy way of describing how one would determine the number of ways a sequence of events can take place. Let's look at an example. You're at your school tuck shop that allows you to choose a lunch meal from a set menu. You have two choices for the main course, a hamburger or a pizza, and three choices of a drink, apple, orange juice, or strawberry juice. How many different meal combos can you select? Let's look at two different methods we could use to calculate this. The first method is to draw up a tree diagram to see the full amount of outcomes that can occur. Firstly, we can choose between hamburger or pizza. Then we can choose between three juices, apple, orange, or strawberry. To get the amount of different outcomes, we go along the arms of the tree diagram and write out the different outcomes that can occur. Thus, we have six different outcomes that can occur. Another shorter method, without having to draw a tree diagram, is to take all the different types of choices and to multiply them with each other. Two lunch options and three juice options gives us an answer of six different outcomes. We call this method the fundamental counting principle. The fundamental counting principle states that one event can occur m ways and another event can occur n ways. Then the number of ways that both can occur is m times n. Let's look at another example that uses this method. In this one, there is a shop that sells four different types of meat, poloni, ham, roast beef, and salami, and three types of bread, whole wheat, brown, and white bread. How many different types of sandwiches can they make? If event one equals to four types of meat and event two equals three types of bread, four times three gives us 12 different types of sandwiches. An important application of the fundamental counting principle is determining the number of ways that n objects can be arranged in order or in a permutation. A permutation is an ordered arrangement of objects. The number of different permutations of n distinct objects is n factorial and is indicated with an exclamation mark. Most people get a little worried when they see the exclamation mark, but you don't need to be. Let's look at an example of this, and you will see how useful and easy it is. Let's look at the letters A, B, and C. If we wanted to see how many different combinations we could make with these letters, we wouldn't be able to use the fundamental counting principle. So let's do this by writing down all the combinations. The first letter can be one of three options, A, B, or C. The second option can only be one of two options, though. If the first letter was A, then the second would be either B or C. If the first letter is B or C, they also only have two options of letters after them. Then there is only one option left for the last letter. It will be what the other two letters are not. Did you see that there were six different combinations? We can use the factorial notation to find the number of combinations without writing all of them down. 3 factorial will give me 3 times 2 times 1. This gives an answer of 6, thus 6 different permutations are possible. This calculation can be applied to many different real-life situations. For example, in how many different ways could we arrange the betting order of a team of cricketers? Remember that there are 11 batsmen. There are 11 batsmen who could bet first. Once the first batsman is chosen, there are 10 who could bet in the second position. There are 9 available for the third batsman and 8 for fourth. This pattern continues until the last position where there will only be one person available. Thus, the factorial of 11, which gives us 39,916,800 different betting orders for 11 players. Most scientific calculators will have a factorial function. This button can be particularly useful, so get to know how to use it. 
That is all we have time for today. Make sure to go through the counting and probability task video on the Mindset website to practice what you have learned. You'll also find more resources on the series guide. Goodbye.